All right, welcome back. So we've seen how to take different JavaScript files and bundle them together with Webpack. It's pretty simple. It's the default behavior of Webpack. We just tell it, here's where you should start. Now just go grab all of the code that is somehow related to this index file. So go grab run and then its dependencies and so on. But that's just JavaScript. But we started out a couple of videos ago talking about how Webpack can bundle all sorts of files images and other static files, uh, things like JSON, SAS, CSS, SVGs, uh, there's a, a ton of stuff we can do. In this video, I'm going to show you how we actually do that. We have to install some packages, we have to modify our Webpack config, and we have to talk about loaders. So loaders are the magic, they're the key for getting Webpack to handle different types of files besides JavaScript. So they are different packages that we install, and they dictate how certain files should be pre-processed as you import them or as they are loaded. So you can transform files and do different things based off of the type of file. For example, we can handle a CSS file one way and we can handle a SVG file another way. So on the Webpack documentation, there's a list of some of the most popular loaders. You can see under styling where it's at, there's quite a few. We'll talk about uh, what the difference is it seems like style loader would work for CSS, but then there's CSS loader. What do they do? How are they different? We'll also talk about getting SAS to work towards the end of this video as well. And then this is not just a complete list. There is another link that will take you to a different web page that shows you a whole bunch of other loaders that other people have written. So my point is that loaders are really, really useful. It's how we get Webpack to handle, to pre-process different types of files. So we're gonna add some CSS into our application. We're gonna start really simple. Uh, I'm on commit five working towards commit six if you're following along. So I'm gonna make inside of my source directory a new file called main.css. So remember a couple videos ago when I showed you the large create react app that had 30 or 20 different CSS files and they're bundled together, we could have Webpack do that for us. But we're gonna start simple with a single selector. We're gonna set the body background color to be purple for now. So of course, right now we're not gonna see anything because we're not including this in our HTML file. We could include it as a script manually, but the idea is to go through Webpack. We could have 20 something files of CSS, Webpack should bundle them together and then somehow get it to just work. <laughs> the somehow part is what we'll talk about. So we're going to need to use two different loaders. One is called style loader, one is called CSS loader. So we can begin if we come down to styling, we're gonna begin with CSS loader. And before we go any further, we have to talk about how we actually set up these loaders. This is what we add into our Webpack config file. So under module, which is an object, we're going to pass in rules, which is an array. And we can put different rules for different types of files for different modules. So we can say, in this case, if a file ends with .css, if the name of the file this is a regular expression. If you're not super familiar with regex, this dollar sign means that it has to end with .css. So it can't have CSS just in the middle of the file name. There has to be a period. We have to escape it, so that's the backslash period. CSS, end of string, or end of name. And then if that's the case, we will use these two loaders. So we're gonna begin by installing both of them, and I'll tell you what the difference is and why you need both in just a moment. But let's do our npm install dash dash save dev style loader and CSS loader. Okay, while that's going, I'm gonna go back into my webpack config and I'm going to update this to now have module. And then we have rules, which is an array. And then we're just gonna add our first rule where we add test. And remember, this is a regular expression. And honestly, we can just copy this one for now, just like this, okay. And this says the file ends with .css. If that's the case, how do we want to handle it? And then we can pass in use, which is an array. And I'm going to start with just CSS loader. Okay. And I don't know why I have this extra G down there. So we're saying anytime you come across a CSS file, use CSS loader, which hopefully installed. It did. Now we have to make sure our app knows about, our Webpack knows about this main.css file. So we're going to add it, we're going to import into our index.js. So import, uh, and we need main CSS, so dot slash main dot CSS. So if I do this now, Webpack will come across that CSS file and 
it should match this regular expression and it will use a CSS loader. So let's see what that does. npm start. Okay. Let's go look at our main JS file. We're going to have to do some scrolling. I'm going to search for purple and you can see down at the very bottom, we have our main.css and it's showing up in this JavaScript file. So what's happening is that the CSS loader, it exists to take CSS and turn it into valid JavaScript code, basically turn it into really long strings and make sure it's valid JavaScript. You can see our selector here, body background purple, but it's not being applied right now at all. If I open up this page, if I refresh right here, there's no purple background, even though that code is included. So that's where style loader comes in. So CSS loader takes your CSS and it turns it into JavaScript. And then style loader will take that JavaScript, which is actually CSS and inject it into the DOM. You can see right here, style loader adds CSS to the DOM by injecting a style tag. Okay. So to use it, it's really simple. We already installed it. We go to our webpack config. The trickiest part is that you have to know that there is an order to this array. So we have to use them in the correct order. This one is going to translate CSS to JavaScript. And then style loader takes that JavaScript and injects it into the DOM. So we need to make sure this happens first. We have to translate to JavaScript before we can inject. So you might think we would put style loader second. They actually load in reverse order. So we need to put style loader here and then CSS loader. So when it encounters a CSS file, it's going to start with CSS loader, translate it to JavaScript and then inject it via style loader. So let's see if it works now. I'm going to build npm start. Let's go back, check our main JS, do a search for purple. Okay. It's still here, but now if we refresh the page, it's now purple. So how is that working? If we look at our index HTML, as we've already seen, there is no link tag. As far as our purple body, we only have this uh, bootstrap CDN, but there's nothing that has to do with our CSS that we wrote. The way that it's actually getting added here is through that style loader. It's being injected. If we look in the elements tab in the head, you can see that there has been some style added. We didn't do that. Webpack did it for us. So that is our first little taste of loaders. I know it's confusing because we're loading CSS without ever actually connecting it to a, a, a link tag in an HTML file. It's all happening through JavaScript. So if I wrote more code in main.css, or if I had a bunch of other CSS files and they were all connected, each one would be parsed and turned into JavaScript and then injected into the DOM. Now, later in this course, we'll see how we can actually spit out a separate CSS file. So if you wanted to have in your, your dist folder, you wanted to have main.css, there are ways to do that and we can minify it. We can do different things to the code, but for now we've set up our first loader. So I'm going to commit right now because I'm actually going to change things to show you how we can set this up to work with SAS S CSS files. So first I'm going to commit. I'll be right back. Okay. So we're now moving on to the next commit where we're going to incorporate SAS. So if you're not really familiar with SAS, it allows us to write, what is it? Syntactically awesome style sheets is the original, what it stands for S A S S. But now most people use S C S S files. It doesn't really matter, but what we're going to do is write some nice SAS that will override the default bootstrap colors, like for this button right here. We're never making that blue. It's coming from bootstrap to override it. We need to use SAS. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, install bootstrap locally. So NPM install dash dash save dev bootstrap. So that's just going to get me the copy of bootstrap on my machine. And then I'm going to begin by in my index HTML, removing this entirely. So we have no bootstrap right now. We're not including it. If I refresh, we just get our purple color from that main.css. So now what I'm going to do is change my main.css a bit. I'm going to delete this and I'm going to rename it to dot S CSS. Now we could have actually kept CSS and SAS. And I thought about doing that to show you two separate rules, but it would be kind of weird to have CSS and SAS at the same time, because if you're already working with SAS, most people would just prefer to write SAS because it's a lot, it's easier. Uh, it gives you some nice features that you don't have in regular CSS. So if you want to see how the CSS works on its own, like we did earlier, you can just go back to this commit, but I'm about to change things to use SAS. Okay. So in here, what I'm going to do now is actually import bootstrap 
which is from this node modules directory. I just installed it and the import looks like this at import bootstrap slash SCSS slash bootstrap. Okay. So right now we're not overriding anything. We're just trying to get bootstrap to work again, but using SAS this time. So if you don't know how SAS works, it's not valid CSS on its own. It has to be compiled or turned into CSS. So I can't just do this. I can't say, okay, when you find an SCSS file, any file that ends in .scss, use style loader and CSS loader because it's not CSS. So this is gonna cause a problem. But what we do is use another loader. If we go back to loaders here under style, go back a page, there is a SAS loader. If we use less, there's a less loader, stylus if you like stylus. And so what these will do is take, in this case, take SAS and turn it into regular CSS. And then we take that CSS, turn it into JavaScript, then take that JavaScript and inject it into the DOM. So a three-step process. Now notice that they, they mentioned it. It does rely on another package called Node SAS. So we're just gonna install all of them together, SAS loader and Node SAS. So let's do that now npm install dash dash save dev sas loader and then it depends on node sas and while that's going i'm going to update my config file to say scss i've already done that and we need to make sure that it's now using sas loader remember the order matters this happens first i'm going to add some comments here actually to make this a little easier to understand so this happens first i'll do one turns as CSS or SAS into CSS. And then this, step two, turns CSS into common JS. So it converts it to JavaScript, which is what we see in our file here, for example. Here is CSS, but it's actually valid JavaScript code. Then the last step, which is step three, injects styles into DOM. Okay, so those are the three steps. And we should be good to go, assuming my install worked. Let's see what happens. So I'll save, and I need to update one thing. I forgot. We're importing main.css here. That doesn't exist anymore. Now it is a SCSS file, a SAS file. Let's see what happens when I run npm start. Moment of truth. Okay. We go to our main.js, and we should see a whole bunch of stuff now. This is all the bootstrap code that we imported. It's turned from SAS into CSS, from CSS into JavaScript, which is what we see here. And then it's injected into the DOM. If we refresh, hey, we're back to our nice bootstrap. Now we haven't actually overridden anything. So we're gonna do that next. It's really easy now. We have all the SAS set up. We can write SAS wherever we want, as long as it's an SCSS file and we're importing it somewhere. I now can override the primary color. So this is a primary button. So the way we do that is by writing, not capitalized, dollar sign primary, and then giving it a color like teal for now. So if we'll save and we rebuild over here, go back, refresh the page, you can see that the default primary color is no longer there. We're getting our own color. And likewise, this error color right here is, I believe danger is the name of that color. So if I wanna change it, I would say at danger, or what am I doing at dollar sign danger is now going to be, let's just make it purple just to see what happens. I have to build again. Soon we'll get a dev server set up. So I don't have to keep doing this. Anytime I change something, Webpack will know about it and it will rebundle for me. And there we go. We're getting purple now. So we are successfully loading SAS through Webpack. It's such a, it's sort of a convoluted, crazy idea, but it's really nice we only have one file, but we are including this bootstrap file too. But imagine we have 20 different files. They all get combined together. They start as SAS, they turn into CSS, then CSS to JavaScript, then JavaScript injected into the DOM. And remember, there is no CSS file in our sources. It's all just index.html and main.js. Main.js is adding the CSS in into the head right here. And you can see all of those styles. It's really long because of bootstrap. So we will see how to get it to spit out a standalone CSS file, but we're not there yet. So I'm gonna commit again. We're done with this little section. We saw our first couple of loaders. These allow us to have Webpack pre-process certain files in different ways. We write a regular expression, we install the loaders, we say which order they should run in, and we just let it do its thing. That's what loaders are there for. All right, moving on, I'm gonna commit. I'll see you in the next video. 
If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.